In this film, I will take you back to the beginning of World War II, when the Germans launched a vicious attack on the Netherlands in May 1940. The film focuses on the eventful days whereby the country prepares for war, Rotterdam is bombed to the ground, the Dutch government capitulates, and the Germans take over the control of the country. In the course of 1939, it became apparent that the Netherlands would most likely not be able to stay neutral in a potential new world war like it did during World War I. Preparations were therefore made to defend the country. Here we see a train being prepared to become an army hospital train. The Dutch population is informed how to protect themselves against air raids. Important buildings are protected with sandbags. Shelters are dug out for the population to find refuge in case of enemy attacks. On the 28th of August 1939, the general mobilization was announced by the Dutch government. Women take over the jobs of the recruited men. A food rationing cart system is set up. Ships are requisitioned for troop and military goods transport. Dutch hubs are being carefully watched by the military. and the Navy actively patrols the Dutch coast. The Dutch forces are on full alert. On the 10th of May 1940, the German army crossed the border with the Netherlands. For five days, the ill-equipped and undermanned Dutch army attempted to resist the onslaught. The Holland soldier leistete überall harten Widerstand. Dem deutschen Ansturm allerdings war auch er nicht gewachsen. Dutch Queen Wilhelmina was persuaded by Army General Winkelmann to flee to England in order to escape being captured and imprisoned by the Germans. On the 12th of May, the royal family comprising of Queen Wilhelmina, her daughter Juliana, with husband Prince Bernard and their two children, Beatrix and Margriet, left the harbour of Eemuiden on the HMS Heerward, aged 93, to Harwich. 
It is claimed that Wilhelmina was not aware of the fact that the ship was heading for England. Some Dutch people criticised the Queen and called her cowardly, but during the occupation the Queen grew into an important symbol of the fight against Nazi Germany. Her broadcast via Radio Oranje from London contributed to keeping morale high among the Dutch population. Till this day part of the Dutch population still considers Wilhelmina to have acted in a cowardly fashion by choosing to flee. In the early afternoon of the 14th of May 1940, around 1327, the German Air Force bombed Rotterdam. 90 Heinkel 11 bombers of the Kampfgeschwader 54 Totenkopf KG 54 squadron participated in the attack. Between 800 and 1400 residents of Rotterdam perished, and about 80% of the old city center was totally destroyed. No less than 78,000 people became homeless. In the evening of that terrible day, many buildings were still ablaze, like the Plan C building seen here. The city burnt for days on end. After the Germans threatened to also bomb other major Dutch cities like Utrecht and Amsterdam and pose an ultimatum, the Dutch government capitulated a day later. General Henry Winkelmann signed the Declaration of Capitulation in the presence of German General George von Küchler as highest ranking officer. In the days after, the people of Rotterdam started to clear the rubble. Sadly, the city council decided to build an entire new city centre, and thus many buildings that were only slightly damaged and could have been saved were demolished as well. What remained was a barren landscape, as can be seen here. The only building more or less still standing was the Laurenskerk. On May the 30th, 1940, there was a sober memorial gathering at Kroosweg Cemetery for the Dutch and German soldiers who had fallen in the battle for Rotterdam. There were no more commemorations after that. Representatives of the various branches of the Dutch army were present, together with the Rotterdam Municipal Executive. Colonel Pieter Scharro, garrison commander of Rotterdam, was the first to address the delegations. Oberleutnant Rannert, represented the German army, which was present with a detachment. The graves were marked with simple white wooden crosses, bearing the name and army unit of the deceased. The joint memorial by both armies is remarkable, to say the least. A memorial was erected as can be seen here. Here we see the NSKK, the National Socialistic Kraftfahrkorps, parading through respectively The Hague, Amsterdam and Haarlem. The NSKK was a paramilitary unit within the NSDAP, the German National Socialist Laborers Party. In Germany, the NSKK consisted of various so-called Motorgruppen, motorcorpses that largely performed logistical and other tasks for the Wehrmacht.
On the 29th of May 1940, the government of the Netherlands was officially transferred from the Wehrmacht military commander of Belgium and the Netherlands, General Alexander von Falkenhausen, to Austrian-born Arthur Seyss Inquart. Originally he was a lawyer and a Nazi politician. Here we witness part of the ceremony in the Riddersaal, whereby he is installed as Reichskommissar. Auf Befehl des Führers und obersten Befehlshabers der Wehrmacht übergebe ich mit dieser Stunde die militärischen Hoheitsrechte an den General der Flieger Christiansen als dem deutschen Wehrmachtbefehlshaber in den Niederlanden. Und die vollziehende Gewalt auf dem zivilen Gebiet an den Herrn Reichsminister Seid Inquart als den Reichskommissar für die besetzten Gebiete in den Niederlanden. In dieser Stunde geht die oberste Regierungsgewalt im zivilen Bereich in den Niederlanden nach dem Willen des Führers von Ihnen, Herr General Falkhausen, auf mich über. Und wenn auch die toten Kämpfe unserer Wehrmacht in der niederländischen Erde liegen, so beherrscht unsere Herzen keine Feindschaft. Auch das niederländische Volk hat aus seinem geschichtlichen Irrtum heraus seinen Blutzoll gezahlt. Die niederländischen Soldaten haben sich im Kampf gut geschlagen. Die niederländische Zivilbevölkerung hat sich den kämpfenden Truppen gegenüber ordentlich benommen. Es liegt nichts vor, was uns hindern könnte, einander mit Achtung zu begegnen. Und es ist für uns, für jeden heute lebenden Deutschen, das höchste Glück, Vollstrecker des Willens, des Führers und der Mittelgeschichte zu sein. Sieg! Sieg! On the 15th of July 1940, the so-called Opbaudienst began its task of redeveloping the country. This service had a military structure and was led by Dutch Army Major Jaap Brunesse, seen here speaking to his Opbaudienst troops. Met ingang van heden is de Opbaudienst ingesteld. Het mogen voor u een bewijs zijn van de snelheid waarmee wij voornemen zijn te werken. Het spreekt wel vanzelf dat wij er met arbeid alleen onmogelijk kunnen komen. Daarom, ik zeg het nog eens, ik vraag het niet van u, ik eis van u uw volledige overgave tot dit bijzonder hoge, mooie doel. Leef het vaderland! Heep! 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 As early as October 1940, the Reichskommissar Seis Inquart decided to reduce and gradually end the Obaudienst to transform it into the Dutch Labour Service, the Nederlands Arbeidsdienst. Social life starts to pick up as well, as the Dutch population tries to regain the typical Dutch coziness, called gezelligheid, of the pre-war era. In view of the curfew that starts at 10 o'clock in the evening. <laughs> Waar dis? Ten waarde van deze driehoek kan jij met je hele familie niet opbrengen. Zijn existence during World War II and listening to the radio was banned by the Germans later on during the war. At the beginning of World War II, the Dutch National Socialist Movement, NSB, a kind of Netherlands First Party, established in 1931, joined forces with the German occupiers as a collaboration party. Its leader, engineer Anton Nusselt, was in the assumption that he could politically run the country as part of the new Third Reich. During World War II, around 1943, over 101,000 people were a member of this authoritarian, anti-democratic movement. In the course of World War II, the NSB became more radical, fascist and anti-Semitic, 
for decades the stigma of NSB members having been in the wrong in Dutch fought during the war persisted. This is interesting footage of an NSB Weerbaarheidsafdeling, WA parade marching on the Domrock and the Dom in Amsterdam on the 9th of November 1940. It is rather astonishing to see the number of spectators lining the route and making the NSB Jose salute. The WA was the militarized entity of the NSB, better called Riff Raff in uniform. They were called the Zwarthemden, black shirts, and were extremely violent to Jews. On the 1st of May 1941, Anton Mussert held this speech. And now on the vast overtuiging wordt the 1st of May eens een dag voor alle volkeren van ganz Europa. De dag waarop de arbeid en zijn eer zal zijn hersteld. De nieuwe dag breekt aan. De 1st of May zal dan met recht de dag mogen heten van het feest van den arbeid. Mogen dit reeds zijn, de 1st of May van het volgend jaar... 1942. En wij, alle Nederlanders van alle rang en stand die begrip hebben van het geen komen gaat van de nieuwe ordening, mogen wij op dan op deze dag elkander beloven dat we onze plicht zullen doen, dat we alles zullen doen wat mogelijk is om te maken waarlijk een sterke arbeidsgemeenschap het Nederlandse volk dat een toekomst ook zal hebben in het nieuwe Europa. Dat is de wens die ik geef aan u allen op de 1 mei van dit jaar, en die zal gelden voor het ganse arbeidsjaar dat wij voor ons hebben. Hou ze met de volgende dag. Part 1 of our series about the Netherlands in wartime ends here. In subsequent episodes I will dig deeper into this period in the Netherlands. You will have noticed a much higher quality of video enhancement, and especially the colorization. This is the result of a new colorization method whereby an AI is fed with manually colorized reference frames. The AI then tries to keep track of the objects in the reference frames. Here is a slideshow of nearly all the manually created colorized reference frames. Thanks for watching.